So far, we have studied linear functions of the form y equals ax plus q, which can be represented by a straight line graph, and quadratic functions of the form y equals ax squared plus q, which can be represented by the parabola. In this lesson, we will study yet another family of functions. The formulae for these functions are written in the form y equals a divided by x plus q. The graph that represents this function is called a hyperbola. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe how changes in the formula y equals a divided by x plus q affect the shape of its graph. This formula for the, what did you call it? Hyperbolic function or hyperbola. Yeah, that's it. It looks interesting, especially with the x value at the bottom of a fraction. I can't imagine what the graph will look like. You're right. This function does have a formula and a graph that are quite different from the other functions we have looked at so far. Do you want to see what it looks like? Yeah, I'm very curious. To see what the graph looks like, let's use the simplest form of its formula. As you saw before, the general formula of these functions is y equals a over x plus q. Remember that this means that we are working with two variables, x and y. As these variables change in relation to each other, the a and q values stay the same. For a particular function, a and q are constant values. Oh, I remember. In this case, we will let A be 1 and Q be 0. That gives us a function Y equals 1 over X plus 0. Hey, I see where you're going with this. This is going to be our parent graph, which we then can compare to the other graphs of the hyperbole, right? Yes, exactly. And the other graphs will have different values for A and Q. Okay, let's see what the graph will look like. First, we need to make a table of values for x and y for this function. The pattern for this graph is not so clear from just a few plotted points, so I think we should use more values than we usually do. We will start with x values from negative 3 right through to positive 3. So with the first x value, y will be 1 over negative 3. The next one will be 1 over negative 2. That's negative a half. Then 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1. Let me try the next one. When x is 0, y is 1 over 0. But something's weird here. You can never get a number like that. But we can say that the y value is undefined when x is 0. But how are we going to plot 0 undefined when we draw the graph? That's a very good question. This will be very important when we draw the graphs. You will have to wait and see. Let's move on to the positive values for x. Do you want to do them? Okay. When x is 1, y will be 1 over 1. That's just 1. Then when x is 2, y is 1 over 2. And when x is 3, y is 1 over 3. Can you plot the points now? Almost. Let's have a look at the table first. Before we plot the pairs of coordinates from the table, can you see any patterns in the numbers in the table? Hmm, 
Hmm, it looks like the y values are the same to the left and the right of the undefined value. Only the signs of the numbers are different. There must be some kind of symmetry there. Yes, that's true. We will explore that again when we have plotted the graph. Another mystery. What else do you notice about the y values? Let's see. As x gets bigger on the positive side, the y values are fractions smaller than 1. They get closer to 0. On the negative side, as the x gets smaller, the y values are negative fractions that get closer to 0. Correct. That is an important observation. Did you see too that each x value is inverted to get the y value? Look here. Invert negative 3 and you get negative 1 over 3. Okay, now let's plot the points and see what the graph looks like. Here are the points from the table. Negative 3 and negative 1 third. Negative 2 and negative 1 half negative 1 and negative 1. We cannot plot any points at x equals 0 since the y value is undefined. Is this the big secret? Not quite. We're still getting there. Can you call out the positive points for me to plot? Sure thing. The points are 1 and 1, 2 and a half, 3 and a third. Can you see from these points what the graph looks like? Can you join the points? No, I can't see what the pattern is. There are three points below the x-axis and three points above it. This looks confusing. Yes, the pattern isn't very clear yet. Let's add more points to our table and plot them. This should make it a bit clearer. On the graph, we need to know what happens here before the point 1, 1. So let's choose x to be a quarter, a third, and a half. When x is a half, y is 1 over a half. Remember that to divide by a half is the same as multiplying by 2 over 1. So y is 2. y is the inverse of a half. I'm with you. So when x is a third, y will be 3. And when x is a quarter, y will be 4. Great! Now we can plot these points. Half and 2 is here. For x, a third, I need to estimate and then move up to y equal to 3. Right, and then x a quarter is about here with y equal to 4. Now the shape of the graph is much clearer here. But let's check what is happening on the negative side as well. Again, we want to know what is happening between negative 1 and 0. So we choose negative a quarter, negative a third, and negative a half. The y values are the inverses of these, so they will be negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. I have already plotted these points on our graph. If we were to carry on plotting points, look at what we would get on our graph. Now we are ready to join the points. We get a curved graph here and another curved graph here. We can choose any x value and we can find its y value by inverting it. Notice that it does not matter how small or large the x values become, the y values will never be equal to zero. So, if I choose x equal to 1000, the y value will be 1000th. Very, very small, but it's still a bit more than zero. It seems the graph never touches zero. That is a very important point. You are quite right. This graph doesn't ever reach the x-axis or the y-axis. If you choose x equal to negative 1,000, you would get y to be negative 1,000th. That is somewhere very far along the x-axis and almost touching the x-axis, but it doesn't touch. Have a good look at the graph of the hyperbolic function. How could you describe this graph? In other words, 
What are the characteristics of this graph? What points on the graph do you think give us the most important information about how this function behaves? I'm not sure what you mean. What I mean is, does this function have a turning point? Can we identify x and y intercepts? Well, I know that the graph does curve, but I'm not sure about a turning point. Could it be the point 1, 1? Look again at what you need for a turning point. For a turning point, the y values need to decrease and then increase after the turning point, like they do on this parabola. Or they could increase and then decrease after the turning point, like this one. I don't see any place where the hyperbola actually turns around. Exactly. So the hyperbola does not have a turning point. On this graph, the y values continue decreasing from up here to down here, but never gets to zero. In the other quadrant, the y values also carry on decreasing from up here to down at the bottom. And the y-intercept is where x is zero. Oh, I get it. There's no y-intercept. Because if x is zero, we will divide by zero and that is undivided. So that's why the graph can never cross the y-axis. That's it. This part of the function on the negative side will never ever join this part on the positive side. The graph cannot cross the y-axis. Let me show you one more important feature of the hyperbola. It has two lines of symmetry. The one line of symmetry is this dotted one here. It has the formula y equals x. Look, the graph could be folded along this line. The one half would fall exactly on top of the other half of the graph. I can see another line of symmetry, I think. You could use the line that goes through the middle of the second and fourth quadrants. Here is the line y equals negative x. If you fold the graph over this line, this part of the graph lies exactly on top of this part of the graph. You have noticed some important features of this graph. It has no turning point, and the function has no y-intercept because division by zero is undefined. Now the last question. Does this function have x-intercepts? Well, we get x-intercepts where y is equal to zero, so let's see. I get zero equals to one over x. If I multiply through by x, that gives me 0 equals to 1. That doesn't make any sense. 0 is not equal to 1. That means that y cannot be equal to 0. That means that the function does not cut the x-axis. That's weird. You really are getting good at this. This function has no x-intercepts, no y-intercepts, and no turning point. Oh, I see. The graph does really have two parts. One on the negative side of the x-axis and one on the positive side. We cannot join them because we cannot cross the y-axis. A line like this, that is a line that can't be crossed, is called an asymptote of the graph. The x-axis and the y-axis are both asymptotes for this graph. Here's another interesting characteristic of this graph. Can you see what x values are possible for this graph? Sure. It looks like it can have any x value, actually, from very big numbers to very small numbers, except x can't be zero. Yes. And likewise, the graph can have all y values except y equal to zero. We also found that this graph has two lines of symmetry. The lines are the y equals x line and the y equals negative x line. I was right. This is definitely an interesting function. It is indeed, and I think we have a good picture now of the parent function y equals 1 over x and its graph, the hyperbola. Now it is your turn. 
use a table of values to plot the graph of y equals 4 over x. Now we are ready to study the relationship between this function and other functions of the form y equals a over x plus q. In this graph, we kept a equal to 1 and q equal to 0. We need to investigate what happens to the graph if we change the value of a or q in this formula. But that's another lesson.